Santa's gonna come. I'd like to introduce you all to a program called Interactive Robogami. Interactive Robogami is an intuitive tool for making customized walking robots. In the middle, you have a workspace where you can build your robot, and on the left is a list of parts that you can connect together, kind of like a construction kit. Except, unlike a physical construction kit, you can customize these parts. You can change dimensions, you can connect them together however you want, to build the shape that you want your robot to look like. The robot aspect comes in when you start adding functional parts, legs and wheels that you can add in any configuration. And these allow your robot to move. The system will keep track of the geometry and the potential motions of this robot so that it can suggest to you what this robot is going to do. It'll suggest gates and simulate these gates for you so that you can see how this robot might work in the real world. Adding more gates adds to the functionality of the robot, and you can combine these gates together to create more and more complex motions. The system will keep track of how these motions interact with each other and show you how that motion looks. It'll also provide you with feedback as to what the speed of the robot is going to be and the path that the robot's going to take through space, so that you can make sure the robot is going to do what you want it to. And if you're not happy with the design, you can continue to go back and change it. You can change the dimensions of the robot, you can add new parts, and the system will provide you with real-time feedback as to how those changes affect how the robot moves. It's kind of like making a computer animation, but this animation is one that you can make in real life. Because the system keeps track of the geometry and the gate and all of the components that you've put together, once you're happy with the design, it'll output a full fabrication plan, complete with a file that you can send to a 3D printer, a list of electronic components and connections, and software that you can load onto a microcontroller to execute the gate you've designed. So if you assemble all of these parts together, then with a couple of extra hours and some hand tools, you can very quickly have a robot walking in front of you. And what that means is that you can move from idea to virtual design to physical prototype walking in front of you on your desk within a day. Why am I telling you about interactive robogami? Well, we're seeing a rise in maker culture. All over the globe for the past few decades, maker spaces have been popping up, increasing our access to fabrication and laboratory tools. This is a scene that some of you may be familiar with. It's a wall of 3D printers. This is a teaching lab at the University of Pennsylvania where my group is based. And these printers sit ready and waiting to print custom parts for any students who might need them on their projects. Our ability to fabricate custom parts has increased with these machines. But the question that I'm interested in is, has our ability to create custom machines also increased? And the sad truth of the matter is that these fabrication tools have not been accompanied by a rise in accessible design tools. And so my goal is to make robots more accessible by making design more accessible. As an educator and a researcher in engineering, I ask myself, what does it mean to engineer a robot, and how do we bring that process closer to the end user? When most people think of engineering, they think of this. They think of the step where you take your idea and turn it into a physical product. The last step, fabrication. But that's actually a very small part of what it takes to make a robot. The whole process looks like this. First, we have a large body of knowledge, theory, and practical examples that we have to combine together and then stuff into the brain of an engineer in training. And that takes a couple of years. Then, once that person has that knowledge, they can come up with new ideas for machines that they want to build. And they can do calculations, simulations, or experiments to make sure that that design is feasible. Now, most of the time, the first design isn't going to work. And so that person has to reach back into their knowledge and figure out what changes to make to the design to deal with any issues that show up. And then, after a few iterations, which might take months or years, 
then they can move on to fabrication. So when we're looking at this process, it seems very clear that the main necessary component for this design process, in addition to the engineer's creativity, is this body of knowledge. And so it stands to reason that if we want to bring design closer to the end user, we need to bring this knowledge closer to the end user. In my group, we look for ways to create these databases of knowledge and encode them into computational tools so that man and machine can cooperate on the design process. And what that means is that a person can bring their creativity, and the computer can bring an engineering knowledge base. And so now, if a person wants to propose a design, the computer can present other options, not just provide a yes or no check as to whether that design will work, but actually make suggestions for the design process. And now, if the person wants to explore those options, the computer can provide relevant data to tell the person what's going to happen so they can make the right decisions. This paradigm of human-computer cooperation opens possibilities for how people can bring their creativity and control to the products that they use. And it allows these users to explore the design space without risk. So here's an example of an activity that we run with high school students with interactive Robogami. We ask these students to bring the robot to the cake without bumping into any vegetables or fruits. You see, we teach health as well. <laughs> And you can see that the design that we give them starts out as a toppling design. It's not very stable. And so it's up to the student to figure out what geometry changes and what motion changes need to happen to make this robot functional. But because they can explore the design through this tool, they intuitively learn concepts such as center of mass or torque or other physics concepts without having to have formal engineering training. And the real-time feedback of the system allows them to verify that this intuition about the physical world is correct. So that, for example, this student was able to verify that her idea of increasing the back of the robot and shortening the legs was the right way to keep this robot upright while executing a sequence of complex tasks or complex motions to get the robot to the goal. And this is just for design modification. When we allow users to have control over the design decisions, they can unleash their full creativity on the robot. So these are examples of other robots that people have created using our computational tools. None of these people had ever built a robot before. But all of them were able to create a functional design that moved forward, turned left, and turned right. And if you look at them, these geometries are actually quite cool. I, as a trained roboticist, probably wouldn't have come up with a lot of these. But they were able to bring their creativity to the process and build a functional robot that would work for them. And so what we did was we wanted to make sure that these designs would work. And so we took these designs and we fabricated six of them. You can see the results here. All of them were fabricated in a couple hours and assembled in another couple of hours. And we made use of existing 3D printing technology. Now, one of the nice things that happens when you're able to make a robot so fast is that it becomes simple, fun even, to experiment with that design. And that experimentation can lead to new engineering insights. Let me give you an example. These numbers here for fabrication are a little bit misleading. If you wanted to 3D print the 3D shape of any one of these robots, it would actually take you probably somewhere between 20 to 40 hours on an existing commercial machine. That's because when 3D printers print out parts, they go layer by layer by layer. And if your robot is tall, that process is going to take a long time. So one time, we were watching a 3D printer do its work, and we thought to ourselves, wouldn't it be nice if we could make this faster? I mean, the design now is quite fast. You can click all these parts together, you get a functional design. That's great. And now the fabrication is the backlog. So we wondered to ourselves, a lot of these robot parts are complex. We probably want to 3D print them. But is there a way we can make the robot flatter? And it turns out you can. Using a combination of 3D printing and origami-inspired design, you can make these same structures except flat. And as an origami enthusiast, I was really excited about this. Folding was a skill that I'd been learning since I was 10, folding cranes in my home. And it was a skill that I could now bring to enhance my engineering design. And so that's exactly what we did. We figured out how to model these 3D shapes as 2D shapes and integrate that into our fabrication process. 
And this allowed us to print these robots with much less material and substantial time savings. And the best part of this is, is that because we encode these ideas into computational tools, I can use my expertise to figure out the right fabrication rules, and then if I put them in my tools, you all can also use print and fold. So where does this bring us? That means that we're not just limited to 3D printing. We can bring in expertise from all areas of engineering or areas outside of engineering to improve our ability to design custom robots. For example, we can incorporate models of materials or layered structures to create robots that assemble themselves. Here's an example of a centimeter scale robot that we created following along the origami-inspired idea. And this robot can fold itself up on a hot plate and then move under the influence of an external magnetic field. This robot is made with a vinyl cutter, thin sheets of plastic, and shrinky dink. All of these materials are available to all of you. And the design was created by converting a fold pattern using computational tools into a sequence of cuts and laminations that were necessary to fabricate this sheet. The sheet can be fabricated in about an hour, and you can see that assembly takes a couple of minutes. So very quickly, you can get this custom robot to crawl away. And now we can see applications outside of just the home or hobbies. For example, let's imagine that I wanted to deliver a drug to some part in the body, and I have access to body heat and an external magnetic field. Well, maybe this robot would be an option for you. It's unfolded so you can put it in a pill, the person can swallow it, it'll fold up and do its work. And the nice thing is that because these robots can be tuned, you can also customize them to the particular traits of the body that they're in, opening the way for new modes of personalized medicine or personalized healthcare. And you don't have to just work at the small scale. You can also work at a much larger scale. This is a robot that we designed also using Robogami, but we fabricated it using aluminum sheet and more heavy-duty motors. And this robot ended up being about half a meter long and is something that you potentially might use for exploring environments in search and rescue or disaster relief scenarios. If you put sensors on this robot, you can build high-level behaviors on top of the gates that you design in interactive Robogami to allow this robot to navigate this environment safely and provide real support. Now, your environment is probably not a cardboard maze, but you can take information about your environment and incorporate it into your design cycle so that you can make sure that the robot is going to work for you. And that customization, the cost is not months or years, but rather hours, which means that we can now really start thinking about rapid deployment of robots as needed. Combining all of these ideas, what I envision is a future where we can create customized robots on demand. And these robots can be deployed and controlled with minimal engineering training. So if I want a fish to bring sensors to the ocean and take measurements for me tomorrow, I can do that using my design and making tools. And if I want that fish to pack flat because I don't want to spend too much space on storage, well, I can do that too using origami rules that I encode into those tools. And if I want that fish to be a swarm because I want to cover a large area, well, I have the design, and they're not too hard to make, so maybe I'll give that a try. So what's next? What awaits us with the ability to create custom robots on demand? There's so many possibilities, it's hard for me to predict. But what I do know is that with the power of fabrication tools and design tools in your hands, the next robot that I see might be made by you. Thank you.